All right. <clears throat> All right. Thank you for joining the City of Kingston's Arts Commission at our monthly meeting. Today is March 11th. My name is Adriel Farr, Director of Art and Cultural Affairs for the City of Kingston and organizer for our virtual meeting. Before we begin our meeting, we'd like to go over a few meeting guidelines to help us navigate this system as efficiently and respectfully as possible. We ask that members of the public and press uh, remain muted and off camera for the length of the meeting. As organizer, I reserve the right to mute anyone who unmutes themselves. Commission members and city staff will control their own mute button. Good practice would be to mute yourself if you're not speaking to avoid background noise and feedback. All of our meetings are recorded. Both video and written transcriptions will be made available to the public on the city's website at a later date. If you're not included on the agenda, please be respectful and courteous to our commission members by remaining muted. If you have audio issues or any technical difficulties, please send a text message to the following number, 845-399-9072. As the organizer for today's meeting, I reserve the right to lock and pause the meeting to eject anyone who has behaved inappropriately. Lastly, at tonight's meeting, we have in attendance Arts Commission members Ann Bailey, Peter Criswell, Lara Giordano, Ione, Linda Marston Reed, Ward Mintz, and Lynn Woods. Guests include Maya Frieden and Linda Law. Thank you for your patience during these difficult times. And on behalf of the city of Kingston, I wish you and your family good health. I now turn the floor over to Lara Giordano, who will call the meeting to order. Okay, let's, hello everybody, order of meeting. And I think that we should first approve the minutes. Does anybody have any comments or changes? Teeny One. change on, on the Todd Samara part, the Todd Samara project. It says here in the minutes, um, the murals painted by Samara on the Maritime Museum have been made into a vinyl reproduction. One of the murals has been made into a vinyl reproduction. The other one, nothing is being done and we may not be able to save it. It was going to be repainted by Chris Gagne. That's kind of still, we're not sure what to do with that, but it's only one. And the other thing is it says the mural in the youth center is still in the process of being addressed and Lynn will provide more. I don't know what that refers to. Are we talking about Catholic charities? I don't know what the youth center is, the Todd Samaram. I don't remember talking about that. The Rondo youth center, the mural that's there. You mean like on Catholic Charities? There's a huge, oh, okay. um, yeah, that one probably is expendable because there's foundation, you know, we talked with Catholic Charities a long time ago and there's some problems with the under, with the underlying surface and there are foundation issues. So the Todd Samara committee said, you know, we may not be able to do much about it. <laughs> it's up to the Catholic Charities. So the only one that we have preserved for sure is the vinyl reproduction of one of the murals on the Maritime Museum. And the other one, we don't know. So just to clarify that. All right, sounds good. I'll Addie, make a are you going to that? We that... Uh, approve the minutes as uh, amended. Right. Yes. First, second, approved. Yes. Okay. Um, so I would like to suggest, if it's okay with everyone, that we let Linda speak first, Linda Law, um, so that she doesn't have to go through, I mean, you may want to hear it all, but you may not want to have to stay for the whole meeting. So uh, I'd like to rearrange the schedule a little bit and let Linda talk uh, about the hologram uh, proposal. Thank you. Um, just give me an idea how long I have. To, to... Oh, oh, I see, like yeah. 10 minutes? That, that's fine. That's about what I was planning on, yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, anyway, I'm Linda Law. I'm the, the new executive director of the Holler Center, which is uh, an ex, a not-for-profit a not that was established in 1998 in Queens. And it was founded by Anna Maria Nicholson and um, Dan Schweitzer, two holographic artists. Um, Anne Maria is still with us and is on the board. Uh, we lost Dan to cancer a number of years ago. Um, but the center had been continued by Martina Mongrovius, who is stepping back for the time being. And um, I am now running the, the Hollow Center, which has been based out of Queens for since what, 1998. Um, but this past year, there's been a lot of changes because of COVID and, and some of the programs couldn't go forward because of COVID. But I want to tell you a little bit about the programs themselves 
that um, we we are currently running, and you know the changes that are happening at, at a new two new projects that are actually uh, I'm hoping to launch in Kingston. And I am I've lived in the Hudson Valley since uh, 2002. I live uh, near Rosendale, and I I love being here. And I've been witnessing what's been happening in Kingston now for some time, and uh, it's it's wonderful what's going on right now. And uh, to see the energy and the vibrancy and the commitment that you've made to keeping the arts in Kingston and growing the arts in Kingston. So anyway, the, the Hall Center was set up as a facility to main functions are for artists in residence programs, for exhibitions and for education about holography. And but, um, there's a lot of misinformation out there about holography. Uh, a lot of misunderstandings about what it actually is, but it, they are true three-dimensional images that uh, do not require glasses to see them, um, that are kind of evolving right now with new technology. But um, the programs I wanna tell you about that are relevant to Kingston are, we've had a, a, an artist in resident Pope residence program happening for a long time out of both Queens and um, Ohio. In the long term, I hope to bring that up here, uh, some aspects of that. We're collaborating with a new facility across the river at Southwood um, run by Hart Perry, a filmmaker who made holograms in the early 70s. And um, he's now starting a new facility just across the road just across the river from Kingston. And there will be an artist in residence program there and we are working with them to raise funds to fund that program. Um, we have been running various projects, uh, exhibition projects and uh, educational programs. There are, um, I just, there's another pulse laser facility in Ohio, in Ohio that has been running for a number of years where artists can get access to using a pulse laser for making holograms of living people. Um, so we've had a, a funding program through the Hologram Foundation in France that has funded the making of new holographic fine art. Um, that program has resulted in about 30 works that have been in a traveling show called Iridescence. And um, last year under uh, COVID conditions, Martina initiated a project that I think is quite lovely called Light Windows, which was open to anybody around, any artist around the world who would, be, would commit to making an art piece in the window, in any window, um, on the prime day was on May 16th, which is the International Day of Light. And it was meant to bring light into COVID times when we were all in, in isolation. But we're gonna continue that this year. Um, Martina is working on that and we have a, a student intern working with us on it too. It's a global project and we have a, on the website for the Hollow Center, we have a, a Google map where each project is tagged and they can be in a private window or in the storefront or whatever. But as I was in town uh, looking at looking for spaces for a, a studio in Kingston, I became really aware of how many open spaces there are actually right now in storefronts. And we are continuing this. We're gonna do this again on May 16th. And I want to throw it open to all the local arts organizations to see if there are artists who would be interested in participating with us and seeing if we can find some of the realtors who control those buildings, if they would work with us to allow us to use those spaces. So we would plan some events for around that week. We'd probably leave them up for a couple of weeks during the early May. So that's one part of it. Um, uh, but the, the big project is the Virtual Museum of Holography. Um, there have been over years, three different museums of holography that have all now folded. 
and um, I spent some time at the MIT Museum researching for an exhibition on women artists in holography because that's another phenomenon of holography. There um, have always been as many women artists in holography as there were men right from the beginning. First three artists were women. So I want to do an exhibition about this and MIT holds a large collection. Um, but I became aware of, of the need to um, expand knowledge and information about holography because there's nowhere to go right now um, in terms of the MIT museum is shut down right now and they are, don't have a very much of a commitment to holography. So the Virtual Museum of Holography is basically using new technology and it uses a technology called light fields and using a high resolution camera, we scan across the holograms making many different views and I'm working with a company called Visby that have new technology that can take that information, transmit it or process it, transmit it, and it can be viewed in virtual reality. So the experience of it would be you would put on a virtual reality headset and you would walk into an exhibition of holograms in the virtual museum and you would experience the holograms like they're really there, although they will never be quite as good as the originals. So um, this will be a part of a, a website, a conventional website, which will be a huge database about everything about holography with all the 2D video stills and documents, sound recordings uh, about the history of holography. So I am um, currently looking for a space in Kingston to locate that. I've been working with the International Holography Manufacturers Association and uh, their chairperson has, um, a, is very supportive of this and is reaching out with me currently in a fundraising campaign to raise money for us to get the equipment and the facilities that we need to do this. And um, I'm hoping that we will get a number of manufacturers. There are over a hundred manufacturers around the world that make holograms commercially. Um, so my goal is, is um, we are currently launching some online courses right now. Uh, one about understanding holograms, another one about making holograms, another one about making digital holograms. Uh, a seminar series about holography is going to be launched in April. And um, I'm hoping that we will have a space in Kingston sometime early this spring or this summer where I'll be setting up this facility. And I hope that some of you and some of your artists will join us um, in making light windows. These can be, this is 2D, but it, it must involve light in some way. It could be a collage that uses transparencies. It could be projected video. Uh, it, 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 we're open to all possibilities, but it's about the, celebrating the International Day of Light and, and bringing light into, into Kingston now as we move out of COVID. <laughs> so um, I hope some of you can join us. You can reach out to me at, uh, Linda Law at um, holocenter.org and the website is uh, holocenter.org <laughs> and um, I, I will be happy to talk with any of you about any of these projects if you have any interest and thank you for making the time to allow me to be here. Wow. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. Any questions? It's like that's huge amount of information. Uh, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Very exciting. So, Addie, did you do you want to or uh, Linda? Do you want to send Addie all those, all of your information, so that we can share it with the whole? No, I could post it up on the chat right now if okay. you like. Very good. Well. Um... I just like to say that that it, it's very very exciting to, to me to have have you come uh, back to Kingston or back to the area, and also to have um, the holograms um, holograms happening in uh, in Kingston. So um, 
I'm very excited. And Ward, Ward is also connected to holograms, I believe, as well, right? Um, very strange history. My, my partner was uh, on the board of the original Museum of Holography. I knew your name was familiar. No, his name is much more familiar than mine. <laughs> and we were friends with Posey Jackson. I'm in constant contact with Posey. She's been helping me all the time with this. And I, I knew your name was familiar when I, uh, I'm, I'm sure we met before at the no, museum. I probably did, yeah. yeah. I was curated there for a couple of years. Oh, oh God, okay. <laughs> Um, I have a question, Linda, and I, I remember going to your museum many years ago in the city. I think it's so exciting what you're talking about as well. But have you started, have you looked for space yet? I mean, have you started your search yet or? Uh, Anne has been pointing me in various different directions where to look. And I, I have looked at a space um, on at the old, uh, the space that Chronogram used to have uptown. Um, it's I, it's an interesting space, and I you know I would like to have it, but it's bigger than what I really need, and it's more than we can afford. <laughs> um, but they had suggested that it could be divided. If you know of any other organization that might be interested in sharing it with me, um, it, it I can see how it could be divided. It has front and back entrances on Fair Street and and Wall Street, right? I think so it's a possibility, but I'm still looking. So if anybody has any thoughts, please <laughs> let me know. And the amount of space you need is like, if you had to put a square footage on, it would be. I, I have difficulty visualizing that. I yeah. probably, I, the, the piece of equipment that has to go in there requires a high, a high ce a reasonably high ceiling. It's an eight foot cube, basically that hangs from the ceiling and has a computer controlled device that that can uh, be programmed so that the camera can be moved and we can make all these different views. But that's the primary thing. I need enough space to, to, and a high enough ceiling to be able to hang that. And then room around it really for work tables and storage basically. But that, and there's a room big enough in the chronogram space to do that. Uh, but the back half of it has got Actually, they sublet it to um, a chiropractor, I think, so that it, it can be divided up. It's got several small rooms back there. Um, and they suggested I do that, but I, I haven't gone any further than that yet. I'm high, actually deep in the, the process of fundraising and, and getting these latest workshops off the ground too. But any thoughts on the subject? <laughs> Um, Linda, could you could you say one more time um, what the primary focus of the uh, as as you get started, what the primary focus of all the different varieties of uh, holographic uh, art? Um, the the mission of the Holo Center is to provide artists in residence programs, exhibitions, and education. And the education spans from, um, you know, I, I've been involved in working as a teaching artist in schools with making holograms for years, although I'm not really doing that so much myself these days, but um, we, have, we have programs that work with schools. Uh, we have courses that are being offered online now. Um, and there's, it's a changing world right out there, right now with holography. We're moving into a new digital form of it, and there's a lot of activity starting to happen. So I'm part of that process too. So all of those, and artists in Kingston will be more, more than welcome to come and join us and learn about holography. I'm hoping to find exhibition spaces where I can put up shows from time to time. Yes, Peter. Have you considered reaching out to um, the Kingston Uptown Business Association, CUBA? Because they are very um, in the know about the spaces there and sort of what's available and what's happening. And suggested that to me. And okay. I haven't yet been able to do that, but um, I, it was a good suggestion from both Great. of you. Yep. Uh, and I will follow through on that. So anyway, well, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Great. <laughs> That's great. Very exciting. Very, Very exciting. Cool. Stay in touch, Linda. Definitely. And, uh, wishing you lots of luck, but you get to spread the word out there. That's <laughs> part of coming to the commission. So Thank good. You. Thank you. Linda, you're going to you're still going to upload um, uh, what you're doing onto our Zoom or whoever that yes. uh, happens. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and and you, should, you know when you have a minute, check out the whole census site. There are a few updates that need to go in there at the moment, but there's a lot of information up there that will tell you all about the whole center. Yeah, you're you're right on you're right on the cutting edge here with all these M NFTs. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, I do, I do, yeah. and and in fact, I just got an email today about an NFT auction for a hologram yeah. going on one of these new holographic devices. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's a crazy world. Anyway, uh, we look forward to having you in Kingston. Thank you. I look forward to being there. Okay. All right. Find a way. Thank you very much. All right. So um, make one quick request that uh, Linda, do you mind just putting the uh, link to the website in the chat for us? I'm just doing it. Great. Awesome. <laughs> I appreciate that. I need to get, get a little close here. Okay. So um, I guess we'll move on to uh, the master plan and next steps. All right, um, so uh, Arts and Culture Master Plan. Um, I've sent an email over to everyone this week uh, with the updated language for the uh, um, for the task forces. Um, so I was actually really encouraged to see what the um, revisions look like. I feel like they're a lot more succinct. Um, and I think it was a really great way to combine some of the um, priorities that we had discussed and just make them a little neater. Um, and I think that they uh, definitely heard our feedback. Um, and I know they're taking a little bit longer with the vision statement, um, just because they really want to roll that over um, and make sure that again, they're taking our, our feedback into consideration and, uh, you know, just making sure that that feels really good. Um, I think um, it'll be really exciting to see what comes of task force solutions. Um, we are still looking for um, for two task force chairs. Um, we have had um, two people step up to to be task force chairs, so we're excited to uh, announce that Ann Bailey is one of our task force chairs. So claps, yes. <laughs> Um, so we're really excited to um, have Anne uh, chairing the task force centered around collaboration, communication. Um, so that's really exciting. And then uh, Maria Elena is not um, here at tonight's meeting, but Maria Elena has agreed to chair the diversity, equity, and inclusion task force, which very excited about. So round of applause for Maria Elena as well. <laughs> um, so just want to say thank you to Anne and Maria Elena for um, agreeing to take on that role. Um, so we are still looking for task force chairs for um, strengthening um, government support policy. And we're also looking for task, a task force chair for um, the strengthening the arts economy. Um, so um, if anyone is, is, is feeling so inclined <laughs> um, or has any recommendations for folks that they think should would be good task force members, um, definitely let me know. Um, and I... I think this next part is going to be a really exciting part of the project. We get to kind of dial in and really get a chance to lay out some priorities, lay out some goals. Um, and again, it's another opportunity to talk with one another, which I think is one of the things that I found really um, energizing from this project is being able to talk about ideas, roll them over, play, push back and forth. Um, so the task force process is going to extend through the end of April. Um, and then we are, we're on our way. We are on schedule, which feels incredible. <laughs> um, but we are making our way through our, through the next part of the draft process. Um, so there was a lot of feedback from State of Culture that they're taking into consideration. Um, economic impact analysis has also been revised. Um, just wanted to make that feel more specific. That was one of the feedbacks that I felt like I got from you all. And I shared that with Lord about just, you know, making sure it really is King Kingston-centric. Um, so 
Um, sorry, we have a guest. I'm just going to admit them. Um, and then um, additionally, just, you know, refining, making sure all of that looks good. Um, we do have the city GIS team working on uh, creating our map from our as cultural asset inventory. And like I've mentioned before, the asset inventory is something that's going to continue um, even after the cultural planning project is done. Um, so we'll have access to that for time immortal. Um, so we'll be able to encourage new folks, um, new organizations that get started, new artists to put their information there and they will be plotted on our map. Um, and it'll be something that we review monthly um, so it won't be instant, but it'll still be an opportunity for people to be able to be included on this cultural asset map, which I think will be exciting. It can live on the city's website. It can live on Engage Kingston. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I have so far. Uh, Peter, do you have a question? Yeah, just a quick question. And maybe it got in my email box and I didn't see it, but we'd ask to get kind of a one sheet on the economic impact. Remember, we had talked about that. Um, getting just sort of all that economic impact into something that we could actually use to to talk about so that we were all okay. sort of talking about the same thing and using the same language. So, am I okay. going crazy? Did I, did we ask, did we talk about that? From my memory, and again, <laughs> I had my wisdom teeth out like two days before then. So, mm -hmm. but from my, from my memory, I remember that we were talking about um, distilling the vision statement into like a one a one line. Um, so I thought it was related to that, but I can definitely check in. I remember at one point we talked about doing that with the economic impact data so that as we were kind of talking with, you know, players, we could say, okay. here's, you know, here's some succinct language about, you know, what the economics are related to the arts and in, in our community. But we don't want one uh, sentence, Peter, you want one page. A one sheet. Yeah. Just yeah. like, okay. yeah an overview, you know, sort of like, here's the big picture and then here's like a general breakdown and this is what it means to the bottom line in your community. Cause it was part of that, uh, part of the delivery but we wanted to get it so it was something that we could all make sure we were saying the same thing. That's the thing that I remember I was a little concerned about was like, there was a lot of information and a lot of numbers. And I just wanted to make sure that we were all sort of singing the same song there, you know? Okay. All right, I will check in with Lord and see about that. I haven't, I haven't gotten that information from them yet, so I could maybe I'll just remind them that that was something that we needed to provide for y'all. Um, sorry, I'm just looking through my. Uh, John, I remember John saying, "Oh yeah, sure, I can do that." Okay. All right. Sounds great. Uh, so I will just double check and just make sure that we get that information. Um, was there? Um, oh. Sorry, I had folks come in. Um, all right, uh, but that's pretty much what I have uh, for um, Arts and Culture Master Plan for now. Um, you know, as we make our way into the next part of the project, uh, you know, like I mentioned um, at the meeting for the task forces, um, being on a task force does not, you know, you can still contribute to other task force projects. If you have some feedback on things, you know, it is, it is but to share. Um, so you're still going to be able to provide input on all of the different, all the four different task forces. So there is, um, if you have any suggestions or thoughts that you've been thinking about, um, feel free to share them. And yeah, looking forward to getting those last two task force chairs confirmed. And we are looking to do the webinar next week. So we're in a good spot, um, but that's what I have. Okay. Uh, I personally would love the economic stuff because it, it, you know, it's really helpful just to be able to boom, boom, boom yeah. it instead of have to explain, you know, the whole thing. And absolutely, uh, it helps a lot. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay. So, uh, any other questions or comments about that? Master plan next step. Can, We're moving just, on to. Can I just do this oh. again for Addie because she yeah. doesn't get it enough and like it's well, you deserve it. This has been totally. a, a huge, huge thing to pull together and it's it's chugging along and the fact that it's on time, kudos. 
thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I feel like it's been a, a team effort. So that feels good to be able to say that I feel like we've all been working together on this really great. And I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, like I, I do feel really good about us being on time. That, that is just a beautiful thing to be able to say. <laughs> Your letter's printing. I just have oh, to sign you. it. Yeah. Well. Have it fun? Yes. I'm sorry, everybody. Hi. No, I'm talking to this guy. Uh, I am always wearing many hats, and so uh, I just had to let them in. I'm sorry, let's move on. Thank you, Addie. Uh, sorry about that little disruption. Uh, and let's move on to the um, Mellon Foundation. I'm sorry, can I weigh in for a moment? I'm not even sure if I'm in the right meeting. Um, I'm... I'm trying to express to the city my frustration. I live in the Rondout with these film crews that are coming in and basically occupying our communities. They've taken all of the parking in this entire residential neighborhood. Um, they've made it all no parking, so you can't park in front of your own home. And uh, last year or the year before last, when they made that Hugh Grant movie, they had a helicopter hovering over the neighborhood for hours and hours and hours. And, you couldn't hear anything whatsoever. And I'm- uh, Excuse me, sir. I, th yeah. I think you might be in the wrong meeting. The wrong. Okay, so uh, does anybody know who I should talk to about this? Like who approves these these film projects? Because I was told it was the arts committee. It's not- so That's why I got on this. It's, oh. not, it's not the arts commission. The arts commission does not approve film permits. I'm the, one, of, one of the people that works on approving the film permits. Okay. Um, and the mayor's secretary also works on that. So if you'd like to maybe connect after this meeting or tomorrow during work hours, I'm more than happy to talk to you about this. Um, yes, I would like to. agenda that we want to stick to. So unfortunately- sure. How can I contact you tomorrow? Um, so my information's on the city website, but I can just post it here for you. That would be great. Um, and if you are, if you look at the filming page, on the city website, it's also available there too. And I believe that um, uh, you've been in contact with Roy as well. Um, so he's another person you can get you in contact with. Yeah, it's really um, out of control. So I'll, I'll talk to you about it tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Okay, Jeff. good luck. Thanks for your art stuff. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay, on with the art stuff. And so let's move uh, to the Mellon Foundation update. Um, so Susie's not here tonight, um, but she said that, um, that we should, that she's happy to resume the meetings next week on next Monday, um, to kind of continue the conversation and just to move that forward, um, and to see if there's, uh, you know, still community interest, community buy-in, um, and that was kind of what she had given me info on she had a little bit more information on the Harriet Tubman um, statue so I have a little bit of an update on that too Good. Um, but if anyone has any other thoughts to contribute to the Mellon Foundation thing um, that's pretty much all the information I had from her okay um, um, I do have a question um, since I own your our contact with Mellon um, do you, is it your feeling that sooner than later would be better? I know it's a rolling application, but uh, certainly um, I think uh, I'd, I'd like to hear yeah. your opinion. Yeah, sooner, yeah. sooner, yeah. sooner is, is definitely better. Um, and I, I think we need to d d decide what the procedure, I, we, we have said that the process uh, would be that we'd be talking with people in the community and um, but perhaps we could begin begin um, to gather how, how we would present. It's not exactly an application, right? It's a it's a intention our intentions to them. What would be the politics of doing that? What what do you what do you think? Well, um, I'm unmuted. Um, I think. The idea was to get community feedback, but also, um, you know, as a commission, I think ultimately we will vote 
I think, on, on what we think has the best chance of being accepted. I mean, I really, that's what we look at. What will most benefit our city and also um, what is likely to, to bring, it, bring the most interest from the foundation. So that would be the next step. But there has been a community conversation going on. Yes, yes. And, um, and, and it's been really, the last meeting was really quite, quite um, strong and some good thoughts and, and uh, good uh, connections in terms of uh, a lot of goodwill, shall we say. Absolutely. I mean, did anyone want to discuss it further at this time or did you want to wait till uh, the next after the next meeting and Susie brings a report back? I think, yeah, yeah I think uh, I think after the next meeting would be a good time. Yeah. Would kind of Lynn, you, you wanted to say yeah, something. I was just going to say maybe, you know, th there were so many great ideas presented the last meeting, maybe it would be helpful to have a little more of a structure, like out of the next meeting, you know, every, every we somehow come up with three ideas or somehow oh, limit three. it. And yeah. then vote on it. Otherwise we can just keep having this conversation, you know, right. we need a structure like, yeah, mm -hmm. our goal for the next meeting is to come up with three, mm -hmm. consensus yeah. of three ideas and then just make an idea the of how to move forward. Yeah. Make the proposal, yeah. I like that. So the stakes are so high, you know, to think that it's just the 300 word submission. And, you know, it's like, yes, no, bye. Um, <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, when I saw the first uh, uh, group of grants and I realized that there were no cities of our size, I'm like, well, I, for me, I think maybe that means that the more out there we are with our, uh, with our, hopes, you know, that the, 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 the grander our scheme is, the more attention it will get from the Mellon Foundation. The mouse that roared. Yeah. Yeah. And, we are. We are think, that city. I think that they, they'd be very interested in our city, you know. Um, for lots of reasons. For so many reasons, really. Um, I agree. Yeah. Oh. oh. Okay, so it sounds like we're going to uh, wait and we're going after the next meeting, we'll have some goals set and some structure put to it at the next meeting and then come back uh, to the commission and make some suggestions. Yeah. Sounds, sounds good. good. Good, it's a plan. I have a question about the Tubman statue. Um, I was hoping that uh, that um, Susie Lynn was going to speak to the fact that she had actually uh, ordered it, you know, like you have to schedule it. So I have some info on that. Um, <clears throat> uh, the Harriet Tubman uh, sculpture is available for November and December of next year. Um, in order to secure it, you do need to provide a down payment. Um, and then there are some other fees that come along with that. Um, from what I understand, the entire cost is around $4,000. And then there's also $60 per month for insurance. And then there's also the uh, cost of install, um, which in Newburgh was donated, um, but in um, other spaces, you know, have been figured out in different ways. We didn't get an estimate on the installation cost. Um, so that's what I got for you on that. Um, Is that, uh, you know, you said next year, the fall of next year. What yeah. about, um, and that's late, November and December is yeah. a difficult time for a winter city like ours. Yeah. I'm yeah. wondering um, what about the following summer and or uh, February, which is our Black History Month? Uh, I'm not sure, um, but I think that, that if that's a request that we want to make, we'd probably have to make it sooner rather than later. It seems like the only way to secure the display of, of the statue and to kind of like claim it for any month would, would be to provide a down payment. Um, so. um, yeah, we can fundraise for that. Midtown can fundraise for that for sure. Okay. Andy, you were talking about November, December 21 or 22? 
2022, from what I understood. Okay. 22, yeah. That's what I understood. Mm -hmm. And regarding the funding, wasn't the library going to contribute something? I think so. Not involved anymore. I thought that. Why don't the, the, I? I can call the library. I think I should. I mean, we have a pretty strong fundraising arm, um, Mad, and I think if we can come up with proposal and plan, and then programs, it won't. It won't be hard for us to do this to raise the money for it. Yes, yeah, she. So, she and we'd love it. to collaborate with the library. That'd be wonderful. She and I know it. I own Deep Listening Plaza. <laughs> I could certainly see it there. I could see it at the library too, you know. Well, what I love though about Deep Listening it. Plaza, it's on Broadway and everyone will see it. So There's just a there. thought. Um, and I do recall that, um, that um, she said that the librarian um, Lady, what is her name again? Uh, Margie. Margie. Margie, yeah. Margie um, said that they had $5,000. Oh, I, re okay. I remember that. <laughs> so, All right. So maybe I'll call her. And you know, yeah. if you're okay with it, I mean, I'll call her on behalf of the Arts Commission and uh, also as part of MAD and just yeah. see if they want to work on this together. I think it makes sense. Don't you think, Laura? Absolutely. And I know that she does. And she did. I didn't know how much money and I'm curious how much the down payment is because I'm, she probably could come up with that right away. Right. Right. But let's I think we need to move on this. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to wait too much longer because uh, it's a great idea. It's wonderful for our city. I'm just wondering about those months if we push it out another couple months and then have it as part of Black History Month. That might be a wonderful time to have it here, to start to have it here, and then it could grow into the summer season. We keep it for six months, right? I don't remember. I don't recall whether it was three months or six months. I thought it was half a year. So maybe we could, Addie, maybe we could find that out. Um, yeah. How do people feel about bringing it for Black History Month and then stretching it out into um, does that conflict with um, programs with around Ben Wigfall at all, Laura? I, I, ben Wigfall's February 22. I mean, not February. It's actually moved to September. Okay. It's exactly. up for three months. So okay. September 2022, October, okay. November. So if we could start this in, in February and run it through the summer, then we, we kind of go into the Ben Wigfall uh, programming. That could be a good segue. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Any thoughts on that, everybody? I, I agree. That seems seems good. Yeah. Okay. Seems good. In case it matters, we want to connect it in this way. I just checked. Harriet Tubman was born in March, so we it could be Happy Birthday, Harriet. Another. Okay. Oh, and it's Women's birthday. History Month. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. Okay. Was, love that. Okay. Yesterday March. Was, <laughs> Go yesterday March. Was her birthday. <laughs> okay. All right. The tenth. Love it. Love it. Yeah. All right. Happy let's birthday. let's aim for that, Addie. If uh, yeah, if you could make a request, might as well get on that list right now. It's a beautiful photo of her on on um, Instagram. I'll, I'll try to get it off of there too. Okay. And and isn't and isn't the idea to put her on one of the bills been resurrected since Biden got elected? Remember, she was going to be in one of the bills. It was the twenty, wasn't? Yeah, so mm. hopefully that'll happen too. Yeah, wow. Let's do this. Let's not wait. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, Thank you. I'm you excited. <laughs> let, let me tell you all. If do you know do you know who Octavia Butler was mm -hmm. or is? Mm -hmm. There's there's a place on the moon for her now. It's named where where um, excuse me on on Mars. <laughs> um, it's Octavia Butler landing. Um, and it's, no, it was the moon or Mars. Wait a minute. Anyway, it was just named for her and I'll, I'll send you the, send you the, the link. It's just incredible. It's a, it's an amazing thing. Cool. Was she yeah. one of the, was she one of the, um, NASA people or astronomers? Yes. Yes. Invisible that was in that figures. She's, okay. she's, she's a, she's a wonderful, uh, writer of, um, what, what could became called, um, 
Afrofuturism, um, extraordinary writer, uh, very prophetic in her writing, um, one of the greats uh, in her field. Um, and so, so this, this recent landing place has been named for her. Yeah, and that's, that's the first one. She was always very interested in stars and in going out into the other planets and so on. If you haven't read her, uh, I recommend her highly. Octavia Butler, yeah. Beautiful woman of color, black woman, writer. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, moving forward, we're going to nail it down for March so that we'll happy birthday, Harriet, is, is our idea. And we're going to, Anne's going to speak to Margie and we're going to find out how to book it and how much they need so that we can get that on the road. Yep. Yes. Okay, great. So um, we don't have very much on our agenda left. Uh, Midtown Arts District update. That was just there. I don't know if you have anything. Uh, uh, yeah, well, or... I, I'll just quickly, just a few things. Um, I, I am contacting the city at this point. We are planning a celebration of the arts and we're trying to do some outside stuff. So uh, it's in the works. Uh, we'll follow all CDC guidelines, but uh, we're definitely working on it. Um, we're also working on a partnership again with Ask Gallery uh, for September. So this will be a, a you know, group show going on there. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, we're also uh, working on this great grant we got from Nikon on uh, policies and procedures so we can really tighten our organization up and we really are we're learning so much along the way about ourselves and I'm mentioning this because you may get a survey in the mail you may have already received it if you're on the advisory of MAD you're going to receive it and it's coming from our um the, our coordinator, Susan Weinrich. So if you see something from C Susan, open it and, and fill it out because it's really gonna help us uh, strategize and uh, work towards our future. So I think that's about it, Laura. Is there anything you wanna add about programs or anything else? No? Yep, yeah. hey. Hi, I own. Oh, sorry, Laura. Yes. Oh, you're muted, I own. Um, sorry, I would like to remind everyone, uh, if you're interested in um, Frances Ann Rollin, my, my great grandmother, who won the bio um, award, which offers now uh, stipends to writers about African American uh, subjects of writers of any color. Um, so she won this bio award for her own book which I reference in my book about her. And I'm gonna be talking about her, reading that and talking about her on March 28th. Um, and Lisa Kelly is also going to be uh, talking about her work in progress. Um, we're encouraging women writers and all writers during this time. So that is the 28th. Um, and also just wanna say, and I'll put more out about this, um, that um, we want to celebrate Pauline's birthday, Pauline Oliver's birthday um, between May 28th and May 30th. And um, that could happen, will happen with a concert. We're looking to do a concert outside um, and in, involve community. Um, uh, there would be um, talking gong, uh, inviting Joe McPhee to be a part of that uh, trio making a quartet. Um, and community events plus uh, deep listening, listening walks throughout the city, which we've been talking about for a long time. We will do several of those and also um, a couple of workshops to help people to know what what deep listening is about. So that's, that's um, in collaboration with a Swiss organization that's doing an amazing, huge, Thing. We're going to do a smaller event in Kingston, but um, they have workshops and seminars and uh, all about this piece called The Witness, uh, which is the strategies for ways. It's, it's a performance piece, but it's also strategies for, for life. 
and for ecology. And so that would be May 28th and to 30. All right. Yeah. I have something. We have to add. so much. Yes, Peter. So I'm uh, thinking about how to start to reopen the LGBTQ community center. And one of the things I'm going to do is uh, uh, there is the, the Uptown Business Association that I was talking about is putting together so called the, the Spring Stroll. And it's going to be Memorial Day weekend. And they're just encouraging. It's, it's not an official event, but they're encouraging businesses to put tables out in front of their businesses to encourage people to kind of get back to shopping in Uptown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the doors of the center and allow a lot of air flowing through. And I want to get six makers to set up tables to have kind of like a little pop-up shop. So what I'm looking for is six queer makers who want to sell their stuff. So if you have suggestions for anyone, uh, please uh, send me a message and let me know um, who, who it is. And, uh, and I'll, we'll look and uh, see, if, see if it's a match for us. And it would probably be uh, like 11 to four on that Saturday and Sunday. I think that I'm gonna make it sort of limited so it's not the whole thing, so. Great, okay. thank you. Okay, great. What kind of makers, Peter? Makers? People who wanna sell their stuff. Any stuff, okay. <laughs> okay. Probably like, like think made in Kingston kind of artist, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Great. Yes. Yes, yes, Ward. Hey, uh, you haven't yet done it. I want to uh, recommend signing up uh, for the Rear Rolls Revival this weekend. Oh. Um, this is when you get your, uh, your group of rolls from all, the, uh, all these uh, wonderful bakeries in uh, Ulster County. Uh, in honor of the Rear Bakery, which was known for its rolls, and people uh, came to pick up their rolls uh, or get them delivered on Sundays. And uh, so I, uh, it, it'll be, it's going to be a fun thing. And they're also going to have a taste test, and there's going to be a committee of experts who are going to decide what the best roll uh, is of all the rolls that are uh, going to be distributed. So it's a, it's a real part of uh, Rondout history, and I recommend going to the Rear Center, uh, rearcenter.org website and checking it out. Well, just signing up now. Yeah, I'm right. Excellent. Me too. I'm just boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Making me hungry, Ward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Hey, great. Anything else? I make a motion to adjourn. Well, then, second. Second. We're gone. Perfect. Have a lovely, Great to see you all. lovely Wonderful. evening. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I do have one thing. If you're